Welcome to the Unschooling Mom to Mom podcast. I'm Sue Patterson, your host here and at all things Unschooling Mom to Mom. If you're new, these podcasts are my little unschooling pep talks for you. I talk about all different aspects of how to create a confident life unschooling with your kids. Not that I'm some big expert, but I've seen a lot. I've seen what works and what doesn't. I've seen how people have overcome their obstacles and created an environment where their kids could learn what they needed and the family could be connected and enjoy life together. I did that with my own three kids who are now grown. I learned all that I know because I surrounded myself with people who knew a little more than me. Well, not only that, because sometimes I learn from people who didn't know as much as me. You know, when you watch someone and you think, wow, that's how not to do that. You learn from them too. They help you clarify some things. Or you see someone who's doing the same thing you did a year ago and you have the opportunity to say, hey, watch out for that sharp turn. It's not marked, but it's coming. Helping other people can sometimes solidify those things that you've been learning along the way. Plus, it keeps the ideas at the front of your mind as most of society is pressing on you to get back in line. That's what I want to talk to you about today, how you can develop confidence as you walk away from the conventional approach to education and parenting. It's not an easy task, but I'm no rocket scientist. I'm just a mom from the suburbs who found that school wasn't working for my kids. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't inspiring. They were getting bored. They were getting in trouble for doing things like not reading in unison off the chalkboard or talking when they had to wait in line, or getting up to use the bathroom without raising their hand first. Just being regular kids with questions and energy. Cooping them up in a classroom where they had to sit for hours seemed like not a good plan. Sure, it was familiar to me, it was certainly how I had grown up, but couldn't it be better? Couldn't there have been a little progress since then? As little preschoolers, I had read about meeting kids where they were, playing with them at their level, fueling their curiosities and interests. And then at five, why did all that have to stop? That didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I had no idea anyone else thought like I did. Was there a way this school approach could be better, more inspiring? That's when it all started for me, this gradual big reveal. It was like I was cleaning a lens and seeing things differently, more clearly, more honestly, more reality-based. School wasn't working. Did I have any options? For me, this started back in 1996. My kids were seven, five, and two. And I know a lot of you listening were very young yourself at that time, but people were doing this before me. I may look like a pioneer at this time, but I wasn't. There weren't the numbers that there are now or the resources. This was the time of communicating through phone trees and with flyers at the grocery store bulletin board. It's funny to think about all that. We have certainly made progress on that front in how we can communicate with each other. At the time, I knew only one family who was homeschooling and she had teens and they made eye contact and they were funny and nice to be around. I was even at her house one day and poked my head into her kitchen And they were doing the dishes and pushing soap bubbles at each other. And for me, this passed the litmus test for normal kids. So I began picking her brain. I wanted to know how they'd learn what they needed. Did she have to know everything? How did they make friends without going to school? How did she manage her own life without the built-in child care of school? All the regular questions, right? I had no idea that parents were talking on AOL message boards, sharing answers to these same questions. At the time, I hadn't even heard of the word unschooling because she was not. I was just interested in taking a more creative approach to spruce up the regular subjects. How hard could second grade be, right? I hadn't yet learned that you didn't have to duplicate the school approach. That would come later as I expanded my circle of knowledgeable people, parents who were in the thick of it. I was on a coaching call yesterday and we were talking about the differences between back then and now. Some things were different, but some things are still the same. Things like parents don't want to screw up their kids' chances for success. Parents don't like what they see, but their own personal experience is coming up short on what to do next. 
Some of us really learn best by picking people's brains, talking with others on the same journey. But back then we did this at park days and potlucks and getting families together to hang out while the kids played or hiked or somehow tapped into the community resources. All those resources you don't really have time to use when your kids are off to school and then recovering from it in after school hours or signed up for the fun stuff they want to do, squeezing it all between 4 and 7 p.m. But when you hang out with people who are approaching life differently, you see more options. You can see what could work for you and your kids. You learn from other families what to do and what not to do. What could work with a little modification on your part. And you begin to create this really individualized life. You start rewriting the rules. Not all at once. Remember, I didn't even know anyone who did this thing called unschooling until we were almost done with our first year of homeschooling. Which I must tell you, doing curriculum, forcing my kid to do the school approach was not fun. Not what I had envisioned at all. It's what made me continue to look around. At first, I was looking for answers to my question, how do you make your kids do these things? And then that led me to some parents who said, we don't. But when you surround yourself with parents who do make their kids, they're definitely out there. They were out there then. We wouldn't have known we had options. I was entering the homeschool world at the same time as the Duggar family stuff was happening. I didn't know them personally, but I knew people like them. And I knew I wasn't doing it like that. I wanted to let my kids be part of the world, to learn how to navigate, to see the world as an awesome place to explore and have adventures, not to wall them off and create some patriarchal nightmare, pretending to be education or giving the kids what they needed. I wanted the opposite of what they were doing. So that pushed me towards those parents brave enough to reimagine what all this could look like. And that's how we stepped toward unschooling. Fast forward to now, my kids are 34, 32, and 29. They had great childhoods filled with adventures and learning and opportunities. They got into colleges and trade schools. They own businesses and homes. They have families and young adult lives. They integrated into adult life without a problem, mainly because they lived in the real world all along, exploring and playing with their interests, with my husband and me right there, offering the scaffolding they needed. So when it was time for them to launch into adulthood, They were prepared and ready to go. I learned so much along the way. Some was trial and error. Some was because I had a hard time letting go of some of the ideas that were familiar to me. But I could see that this life, this unschooling life, was all about truly individualizing all of it. And for me, it didn't happen in a vacuum. I learned from other people who were also on this journey. Some ahead of me, some behind me, some doing things in a way I wanted to do, some doing things I didn't want to do. We had monthly mom's night out where we'd talk about ways to learn and how to cope. We'd read books together and people would bring the curriculum they had found so we could look at it ourselves. So for probably the first three years, I was on a quest to pick the brains of as many people as possible. I knew that my personal firsthand knowledge was coming up short, so I had to learn from these other people. And that's what I did. But back to my coaching call the other day, we were talking with parents of younger kids about how different the landscape looks now. Lots of places don't have park days or they have so many park days or options that they don't feel the same connection to the people the way I felt back in the 90s. So after my kids had grown, I created a little mini course to help parents get more confident in this unschooling approach. I think it lasted for a couple of months. We'd talk about different topics like rude relatives or finding learning or tapping into the community resources. We'd get together on weekly Zoom calls and they'd ask questions and we'd all share ideas and answers. Then the course ended and they wanted to know if we could keep it going somehow. Could we do book clubs or topics each month or basically recreate the park days and mom's night outs, but online? They were scattered all over the world and having trouble finding other people near them. I said yes, and this was the start of my Creating Confidence membership group. It's evolved over time as I kept making more PDFs or recorded topics and ideas. I still do those Zoom coaching calls. Now it's twice a week. Parents get coaching from me, hear about resources and examples from each other. We make plans together for the week on Mondays and come back for a more Q&A opportunity midweek. They get the inspiration for how to do this very unconventional but wonderful thing with their families. 
And we have a real life get together happening in Houston in October. That'll be fun, like the old days. But we'll be hanging out by the pool. My situation, and because we weren't as well versed on the internet yet, made me a slow learner. (laughs) It won't take you three years to figure this out or see that leaving curriculum and the old ways behind is a good idea. You have way more resources at your fingertips. I had to wait for those monthly Moms Night Out or hope that someone I wanted to talk to about a specific thing was going to show up at the park date and then hope that we could actually complete a sentence as the kids were all around playing and needing us to. We've had a big wave of DIYing our way through life in the past 20 years or so. The internet has helped with that too. Even with unschooling, you can DIY it. You can listen to this podcast, watch videos at YouTube, read blog posts at the Unschooling Mom to Mom page, follow people on social media. I've made a ton of resources to help you figure this all out. But the other day, someone who joined my membership group said that they had been patchwork quilting their way through the last two years. They were stopping and starting, trying some other curriculum that maybe didn't seem too bad, only to have their kids resist that too. Maybe the mom thought it was really great. You've run into that, right? You think something's really great and your kids are like, uh, no. She had tried every curriculum approach, but she wanted to try them all before she went with unschooling. Lots of us do that, right? For some reason, we want to keep some pieces of what's familiar before we toss it all. It's such a faulty construct, though. It doesn't have to be an either or thing. Because the thing to remember All the time you're wasting trying everything before you dive a little more into unschooling, your kids are getting older, habits are forming, frustration is growing, and as you try all the other approaches, forcing them to do just one more paper or one more workbook page, that's digging a rut in the road you're going to have to fix later on. And I guess my big question to you right now is why do that? Why not start learning about unschooling and implementing the parts that seem logical? What would work for you and your family easily? Start there. Don't let fear keep blinders on you so you don't even look. Nobody is going to ask you to drink any Kool-Aid, I promise. See what it's like to be surrounded by people who want to explore more of this non-traditional approach. No one is going to say you're not doing it enough. There are no unschooling police in my group. (laughs) We're all on a journey toward individualizing our learning and our lives with our kids. We're all learning how others may do things differently. Some parts that could work for us and some parts maybe not yet or maybe never. But after being with others who are so invested in maintaining the status quo, this will be so refreshing for you. Yes, you'll have to look at some internal motivations you have, but they're quietly back there running the show. Wouldn't it be nice to see your intentions clearly and make decisions out of logic instead of simply because it's familiar? Maybe you have some fears to look at to see which are rational and which were used on you to keep you in line, and now you're doing it to your own kids without even realizing it. Or maybe you realize it, but you think that that's what you're supposed to do. I'm not saying all your ideas have to go. I'm just saying choose them consciously. That's the kind of information you'll find in our membership portal. We have two coaching calls every week where parents bring questions or I talk more about how to embrace unschooling. These are recorded and available if you can't make it live. We have recordings from past calls, past guest speakers, book club discussions. All the unschooling guides are available to you in there, plus the eBooks I've done. We have PDFs and worksheets to help you tackle your obstacles. Maybe it's how unschooling works or how de-schooling matters. Maybe it's how to deal with critics or technology or learning to read or learning math. Maybe it's about how to connect with your teens or how to get your little ones to bed. Unschooling is kind of like bringing attachment parenting principles to bigger kids. We seem okay with it when they're two, but what about when they're school age? I have so many resources to help you tackle all the parenting obstacles that are getting in your way. Yes, they'll learn. Yes, they'll get into college if they want to. Yes, you can figure out how to talk to your relatives about all of this without everyone melting down. And yes, you can have the home life you've wanted. Lots of new members come in and say, wow, I knew you had a lot of resources in here, but I had no idea how much. After a few weeks or months, they feel so much calmer. They're beginning to grow their own confidence. And they often say, I wish I had done this sooner. I'd have had less to undo. We'd have skipped all that stuff that seemed so important, but wasn't. I didn't realize what was happening. 
So that's what I want for you. I want to invite you to come to the membership group. See what it feels like to be with people who want to make some changes. See what it feels like to feel supported as you choose a truly individualized life for you and your kids. Just like me and my little mom's not out. You can do this in a community. You don't have to be alone. The other more schoolish approach, whether it's traditional homeschooling or the local school, it's still there, ready for you if you want to go back. But what if you had some adventures with your kids? Whether this is your gap year or your new way of life, it's all up to you. Your choices. What works for your family? This month, there's no sign-up fee. And you can pay month by month. Leave any time. Or you can decide, I'm going to give it a year and see what happens. Pack in all the adventures. Relax into prioritizing connection with your family. Let everyone heal from some not great experiences. Revisit it all in a year. Kind of like stepping off the conveyor belt for a while and writing your own rules. Sounds kind of good, right? I want to support you in this. It is good. I think you'll like it. Let your life happen at the speed you choose, not because someone says for the next 12 years, one size fits all. We know that's not true. I'll put the link in the notes for you to hop into the group this month. For a month, for a year, for however long you'd like the support. Some people have been in the group since 2016 when we started. Parenting can be hard. No one gave us a manual. And even if they did, we know more nowadays. We don't really want to duplicate the old ways anymore. We can all learn from each other. As we wrap up August, I wish only wonderful days for you and the kids. I want you to build a life together exactly the way you want it to be. You might surprise yourself. Happy unschooling. I'll be back again soon.